Welcome to Be Smart About OData, Dollar Filter Like a Pro. Hey, I'm Eric, and uh, when it comes to OData, there's like one typical error that I have seen a lot over the last couple of months, is that people find an OData endpoint, which is great, they get the data, and then they do their processing. Uh, but what they actually do is that they get all the data and then they do all the processing on the client side they do filtering on the client side and all that good stuff um re and and resulting in two issues so to speak one is the you know this will have an impact on your business central uh tenant because if you're spending a, if your if your server is spending a lot of time querying data, well, then your posting might get slower or whatever it is. Two, you're also wasting a lot of time in transmission. Um, so what's the solution? Well, it's in, in, the, in the title. We need to filter. And, and all Business Central users and NAV users for that say know that filtering is the key to make sure that you get the right data. And we can filter on OData. Uh, it's a slightly different syntax, but we can do all the same filtering that we know and love from BC. We can do that on OData endpoints. And if we query with a filter, then we let the server do the filtering and we only transmit the data we actually need. So there is less work for, for all involved. Uh, apart from those who needs to create the filter, I guess. But you would create that anyway, just on the, on the client side. Um, but let, let me show how this works instead of just talking about it. Um, and just for fun, here is the simple object designer. And I have exposed the customer table as an API. Uh, just the number and name right now is sitting on this endpoint. And I think my Browser is authenticated, so we can see that this is this is pretty nice. We get all the customers as expected, and we have a URL, and your the URL can be formatted in lots of different ways. But what we're going to focus on in this video is what's not on this uh, URL right now, and. Um, there's actually a great documentation page for this um, on from Microsoft. Go away, release, call, call using filter expressions in OData UIs. Translated, querying data by using a filter. And we can see blah, 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 blah. So let's start here. We, we can see that we need to use dollar filter equal to define the filter. So if I go up here and hope you guys can see this in the video, I do, in this case, I will do an ampersand and then I'll do dollar filter equal. And you can see I already did a couple of them before I started. I could say that number underscore EQ, EQ for equal. And then I put it in quote and I'll ask for customer 30,000. I hit enter. I just get that one. So filter, um, dollar filter equal the field name space EQ for equal. Uh, so the, the, the equal sign, all those signs that we normally uh, use in filters are problematic in, 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 uh, in the uh, in in a URL in a query string, um, so so it's something else. But this would be the same as if I went into Business Central, opened the customer list, and did a filter on a, you know do a filter on number. 30,000. Same thing, the same way the server is processing this. This I just did this using the um, the OData syntax. Uh, 
instead of equal and you can see as soon as i get into this uh i hope you can see this anyway uh as soon as i get into this spaces and quotes get turns into uh, into hex code by the browser but it's still the same so i can just say instead of equal i could do greater than gt greater than and i get those three and i can do less than and I, I get less than so and if we do an end so we, we can also do so now we have that it's let's do uh greater than thirty thousand and uh less than fifty thousand uh, and now I got a syntax error here because I just said and so you cannot do that would not work so we have to say and and let's do that again so and number less than 50,000 we need to specify the field name twice and now we got 40,000 um, and here's another example where they they query entry number that way um you can also use and between different fields so in this case the example here country code equal uh, spain and payment terms code equal 14 days um you can also use or but you can only use or if let's let's try that here so let's say that we'll do number equal 30,000 and number so if you do num you know number equal 30,000 and number equal 50,000 then well there are no customers who are the numbers are both 30,000 and 50,000 so in that case we'll have to do or and then we get those two customers but you can only use or be, uh, on the same field field name so you cannot say um payment code equals something or uh zip code is something else uh, and do a double query that way that's not how it works Less than and greater than we always did those. There's also, you can also, instead of now we use greater than and less than, so we never got included the one we were working with, but we can do greater than or equals is GE, or less than or equal is LE. Um, so we can get the same as we, if we do a dot dot. So a typical dot dot filter in, in BC would be number um greater equal 30,000 and number uh, less equal 50,000 then we get 30 to 50 instead of before it we just got 40 because we said greater than 30 and less than 50. Um, then we can do NE for not equal, so different from. Um, and now we get getting into some other ones. So, so you, so you, you know that we can we can do in in BC we can do a. Um, let's uh, let's go back to our customers for a second here and say that it should end with four zeros. And if I remove this filter, we can see that there's actually one that's not four zeros. So we can use the ends with functionality. So we could say filter equal ends with, and then it's still the number, and we do four zeros here as a quote. And then we get those five customers who ends with 
the four zeros. Start with contains uh, and the next from this point on it's it's not necessarily backed by uh, backed by indexes by back, backed by keys in business central but it's still then you you're putting the query processing on the server and you're still saving the transmission uh, cost because now we can we can look at index of uh, uh, we can Uh, and we can replace, I don't know, I'm not even sure how replace is going to work here. So I'm just going to ignore that. If you tell me a good example where you would ever query with replace, uh, then I would love to know in the comments below. Uh, we could we could query for a specific substring, two lower, upper, we can trim, we can, uh, we can query where we are actually combining two fields uh, we can query on a round and a floor and a ceiling on number so upper lower um, so this is actually pretty cool uh, and instead of you know pulling over thousand hundred thousand millions of records just to filter away 90 percent in power bi or something and i, I know that you know those repos runs in the background on a server somewhere so you don't really feel the impact but it's still wrong right it's it's still it's still a lot of data that you get transferred from a to b and then you just throw it out um so dollar query is your friend and don't get don't get confused with the gt lt eq n e uh, g e l e things it, it's just a replacement for those the equal sign the greater than less than brackets uh, stuff that's just hard to put into a uh, into a query and and survive the uh, the rough condition of the http protocol um so that's dollar filter uh, I use it a lot and uh, you know the more data you get the more need you have for actually doing this in your queries um, so let me know in the comments below how uh, how you're doing this today and if you're gonna if you're already doing the the dollar filter thumbs up perfect otherwise give it a try right after you have checked out this video because that's a good one see you there bye